Live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. Larry Zonka is one of the greatest players in the history of the Miami Dolphins franchise. Odds are, when you think of the Dolphins of the early 1970s that were the class of the AFC and were somewhat of a mini-dynasty, Zonka is one of the first names that comes to mind, and rightfully so. He's a five-time Pro Bowler, a two-time first-team All-Pro, a Super Bowl MVP, and a Hall of Famer, as he got inducted in 1987, forever enshrined in canon. Zonka is a Dolphins legend and an NFL legend in every sense of the word. However, what you might not know about Zonka is how close he came to retiring before all of this took place. In 1969, not even one year after getting drafted by the team, he was thinking about calling it quits. Kind of. The whole situation was incredibly bizarre, and there's a lot of things about it that don't make a whole lot of sense necessarily, but we're going to take a deep dive into it anyway because why not? This is the strange story of the retirement controversy involving Larry Zonka. Before I talk about the actual incident in question, we need some context to suggest who Larry Zonka is, and how his career was going up until that point. In 1967, the Miami Dolphins were not a very good team. It was their second season in the AFL, and while it was an improvement over their expansion season, mainly because Bob Greasy was their quarterback, and on a rotating cast of characters like Dick Wood and George Wilson, the coach's son, they still struggled, going 4-10. and And a big reason why was because of their running game. They had no star back. They had no one that was dynamic or was a surefire thing in short yarded situations, or you could trust to give the ball to. For some perspective on just how bad the Dolphins were at running the ball in 1967, consider this. Among players that finished the season in Miami, their leading rusher was Stan Mitchell, averaging just 3.2 yards per carry. He had a grand total of 269 rushing yards. He played in every single game. This meant that the leading rusher on the Dolphins was averaging 19.2 yards per game. Imagine a player averaging less than 10 yards per half and being the top rusher on your team. Well, that was the predicament that the Dolphins were in. And when your leading rusher is 18th in the AFL, a league with nine teams at the time, that's a very bad sign. There were not one, not two, but three players on the Oakland Raiders who had more rushing yards in 1967 than the leader on the Dolphins. After Miami got the passing game sorted out with Bob Greasy in 1967, they needed to get the running game sorted out in 1968. With that, they spent their first round pick, which was eighth overall, on the main character in our story, which is a Syracuse fullback by the name of Larry Zonka. Problem solved, right? Well, not quite. Even though the Dolphins held its rights, they still had to win him over from the Montreal Alouettes in the Canadian Football League. Contract negotiations with Miami initially were not going anywhere, and Zonka received a three-year offer worth $100,000 to play in Canada. This was at a time where the average pro football player was making around $9,000 a year. Plus, Zonka loved to hunt and fish, and even after getting drafted by Miami, participated in some fishing tournaments in upstate New York. He loved that region and loved Canada, and it seemed like he was going to take his talents north of the border. But as you guys know, that never wound up materializing, as Joe Robbie did everything in his power to bring Zonka to Miami. He signed with the Dolphins, he was happy about the outcome, and everything seemed to be good. But one year later, after a shaky rookie season, things would get somewhat rocky and incredibly bizarre. The good news with Larry Zonka was that in 1968, it was clear that he had talent and belonged in the American Football League. Having that one-two combo of Zonka and Jim Kick, who the Dolphins acquired in the fifth round of that draft, improved Miami's rushing attack, and would eventually play a vital part in Miami's success throughout the 1970s. When you finish your rookie season fourth in the league in rushing touchdowns, and inside the top ten in yards per carry, that is never a bad thing. Especially over the second half of the season, Zonka did his part, and helped guide Miami to their best record in franchise history at the time, albeit an unimpressive 5-8-1 record. The bad news was that he could not stay healthy at all. He had serious injury and durability concerns. During the fifth game of the season against the Buffalo Bills, he got a concussion after he hit his head while being tackled. This would be an unfortunate theme throughout the early days of his career. While Zonka came back from this after spending a few days in the hospital, he got another concussion in the eighth game against the San Diego Chargers, along with a ruptured eardrum and a broken nose. Two head injuries like that in one year was never a good sign. And unfortunately, it was about to be three in a 12-month stretch. The following year, the Dolphins played the Philadelphia Eagles in an interleague game during the preseason. Zonka got hit during the game, and once again suffered a head injury. 
When x-rays were taken by trainer Bob Lundy, the results were not good. They revealed what was described as a questionable abnormality on the bone surface of the skull. This was the third concussion in a 12-month stretch that we knew about. There easily could have been more, as Zaka said he was suffering from severe headaches a lot. When you combine that with the fact that Zaka had a broken nose and an infected ear, which was the second time that happened, and it wasn't looking pretty for Zaka's future. Head coach George Wilson made it seem like Zaka was about to retire, hang it up, and call it quits due to health issues. Wilson was concerned about Zaka, saying that he was susceptible to head injuries, and that he was afraid for his sake. The way the press conference went, it made it seem like Wilson and the Dolphins were either encouraging Zaka to retire, or were flat out saying that Zaka was done, and were trying to force him into an early retirement. The only problem? Yeah, Larry Zaka had no idea that any of this was even happening. Picture this. You're Larry Zaka, an incredible fullback and an incredibly talented player. And you wake up in the morning and do what Larry Zaka does. You eat breakfast, you listen to the radio or turn on the television to hear what's going on, and then you read the newspaper. And as you read the newspaper, you read an article saying that your head coach thinks you should retire, and that you were about to announce your retirement, even though you had absolutely no plans whatsoever to do that. Kind of weird, right? It'd be weird to read about yourself in the newspaper doing something that you had no intention of actually doing. Well, that's exactly what happened to Larry Zonka early on September 4th, 1969. He picked up the newspaper and saw an announcement in there about his own retirement. At first, Zonka was incredibly confused, because, well, how could he not be after reading that? But afterwards, he spoke to the press and said that he wasn't going to retire even if Coach Wilson and the Dolphins were trying to force him into an early retirement. Zonka said on the whole ordeal, It's silly to think I'm through. I read in the morning newspaper about such things as forced retirement, and they just aren't true. He also said that the injury in the Eagles game was blown completely out of proportion, and that he would miss anywhere from two weeks to two months, but he didn't feel like it was a career ender like the Dolphins staff did. You also have to remember the context of the football world in 1969. If this was 2021, this situation might play out entirely differently, especially now that athletes know the severity of concussions and head injuries, and since coaches and team personnel are more aware of it. For a coach like George Wilson to express concern about Zonka and his history with concussions more than half a century ago was almost unheard of, and it is somewhat commendable. However, it led to a really awkward and hilarious situation, where you had a team and a coach almost trying to force their player into retirement, and the player saying, nope. I don't really feel like retiring. How did all this work out in the end? Well, it's safe to say, both parties wound up pretty happy that nothing happened on the retirement front. After missing the first three weeks of the 1969 season, Larry Zonka came back in week four and played every game that season, staying relatively healthy. He actually improved off of his already impressive rookie campaign, finishing that 1969 season with more rushing yards, yards per carry, receptions, receiving yards, yards per touch, and yards per game. But the real turning point in his career was in 1970, when George Wilson was replaced by an NFL coaching legend named Don Shula. When Shula got there, along with backfield coach Carl Tassif, they completely adjusted Zonka's running style to prevent the constant stream of head injuries that not only plagued him over his first two seasons, but prevented him from having a long, prosperous career in professional football. Instead of teaching him to run while leading with his head, like he had been doing for his whole career up until this point, they taught him how to run while leading with his forearm. And to say that that simple adjustment made a world of a difference would be a massive understatement. Zonka, the man who was playing with constant head pain over his first two seasons, didn't miss a game in 1970, or 1971, or 1972, or 1973. All of a sudden, Zonka went from injury prone to extremely durable, and the rest is history. He helped the Dolphins get to three Super Bowls. He led Miami to wins at Super Bowl VII and Super Bowl VIII, helping the Dolphins not only become the second team ever to win back-to-back -back Super Bowls, but helping the Dolphins become the first team from the AFL to win two Super Bowl rings. He led the league in yards per carry in 1971. He averaged over five yards per carry during the 1972 season, when the Dolphins became the first and only team in NFL history to ever finish a season undefeated without any ties or losses. He was named the MVP at Super Bowl VIII, becoming the first fullback to ever receive this honor. And whereas there were reports about Zonka retiring before the 1969 season even began, he wound up playing all the way until 1979, with pit stops in Memphis in the World Football League and the New York Giants along the way. 
But it's crazy to think about just how close Larry Zaka's story career came to never happening at all. With all those head injuries, the Dolphins and their head coach were practically begging him to retire, and Zaka refused. However you wish to interpret this story and the moral behind it is up to you, because knowing what we know about concussions today, I'm not sure how many players, if all but forced into retirement by their head coach and their team, would still continue to play, especially if the doctors advised against it. But it's clear that NFL history, and Dolphins history for that matter, changes forever if Zaka decides to call it quits after one year on the pro circuit. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com, and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Monday and Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at jaguar9, and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.